Hey brothers and sisters. Wow. I started recording a video and within maybe 30 seconds, 45 seconds, Google sends me a compilation of pictures of myself as I'm starting the video. Y'all, <laughs> those times are crazy. I, you know, okay, call me old fashioned. I haven't done, I don't ever do Facebook. I, I haven't done Facebook. Um, YouTube, I only started because God told me to do, you know, to start it um, last March 16th after he gave me my first rapture dream. And, uh, you know, I just don't, I don't have a social media presence. I don't do Twitter and everything. And, and to think that here I am, I'm just starting, I'm sitting at my kitchen table, just starting a video and Google comes up showing me a picture of myself. This is nuts. Anyway. Okay, I have a lot of material. I haven't done a video in several days, and the and God has just been doing so many amazing things, amazing things, of walking by the Spirit, just so many messages that He's giving me, so many um, opportunities He's giving me. I, I just, I'm really excited. It's, I really am. I think that it's all signs that we're going home soon, and there's work to be done as the as the harvest is ready and and he's getting more and more people into the kingdom even at these last last moments and if they don't get into the kingdom in the rapture they'll be ready to go when um when the tribulation begins and yes it's the seven year tribulation but the last three and a half years is the great tribulation okay um so in i got so much material I'm just going to, on this one, I'd like to just focus on evangelism because yesterday I had two really extraordinary evangelism opportunities and I want to try to recreate as much as I can um, one in particular to help you, to help you realize that if you just walk by the Spirit, God is going to give you the opportunity to share the gospel and, and if you, um, and you can do it. That's it. You can do it. Um, so, part of being a good uh, evangelist is that you've got to listen. You've got to listen for things that other people say that will prompt you into how to lead them through the gospel. Um, so, let me go with the first one. Okay, I'm at the hospital. I meet a, a, a woman for the first time who um, is... Um, doing a dog visit and after we're talking after the visit um, which was an amazing visit by the way I'll probably do another one about that um, um, I come to, I hear her I'm listening to her and I pick up that she has had um, depression all of her life and if she's watching this video I, I think she, I mean she knows that I could possibly be doing a video on it um, so I don't think I'm violating anything um, and in fact, I want y'all to pray for her. So her name is Michelle. I want you to pray for her. Um, so, so a lot of the people that God sends me to are, are uh, and so it's not unusual for me to be sent to people that struggle with the same, th same things that I have struggled with, um, which is lifelong depression or long-term depression, I guess not lifelong, long-term depression caused from PTSD. Now, I've been healed from PTSD. Thank you, Jesus, for doing it. Um, but my PTSD began um, with God telling me my husband was having an affair in the church with the woman that I held hands and prayed with every Sunday uh, in a singing ensemble. And so my depression was for for nine months, very, very, very severe. And, um, and then when I got born again, I had an immediate, uh, lifting of the depression in that, um, I didn't, you know, I no longer wanted to take my life. <laughs> God had taken my life. I had received the Holy Spirit. I was full of joy. I was full of this incredible love that I had never experienced before. So, um, yesterday when I was listening to this woman, um, I heard her mention some things that indicated that she had depression. So I asked her about it 
and she's been struggling with severe PTSD for 20 years. And the problem with PTSD is that every, every, they're like all through your day, there are little things that will cause triggers. They're called triggers. And so you'll see something and that will trigger a thought in you that is a, depress a depressive thought. And so I was talking to her about, I said, you know, I've dealt with this and that the way to be healed is to allow Jesus to take over your life and to um, let him guide your thoughts, to replace your thoughts with the mind of Christ. So she was very interested in it. And um, so I listened to her to know what were some of the things that had caused her traumas through the past. So it's not like... Um, it's really called complex PTSD. That's what the psychological term is. Um, but basically, you know, you can look at it the way the world terms it as psychological PT, uh, complex PT, PTSD. Or you can look at it from God's perspective that you're broken hearted. Pretty simple. It's that you've had a broken heart. And so as your heart was initially broken, in a relationship, you keep having more and more things break your heart. Now we are, um, we're supposed to be tender hearted, but broken heartedness is what God uses to bring us to a saving faith in Jesus Christ. He wants to have us be broken hearted so that he can fill us with the new heart, the new heart of Jesus, which is love and all the fruit of the Spirit, love and joy and peace. You know, he wants to take out that, that brokenhearted that caused you to have all these depressive problems and put in a new heart. So um, I started talking to her uh, about how I had been healed and then how also God had used me, uh, particularly this past summer, uh, starting with a healing ministry, if you want to call it that, but basically, it's just walking by the Spirit and being sensitive to just that, you know, God, am I supposed to pray for that person's healing and seeing people get healed, which is very cool. So I started talking to her about that um, if she wanted, you know, because she's on, you know, she's taken the medicines and she's done all that, but she still has the problem. And I said, you know, on September 20th, God said, no wine until the rapture, and then I stopped taking my antidepressants too, and I haven't had any depression. Um, so I was telling her, you know, the medicines are are only part of it, and that you have to really to get healed, you have to get a new mind, a new a new brain, a new mind. Um, so I talked to her and uh, found out that she has. Um, been under a religious uh, a religious life in the Catholic Church, and, um, and she loves the Catholic Church. And so I had to tell her. I said, you know, um, the Catholic Church is lying to you. You're, you know, and she's like, yeah, I know that what they say is not true. I know what they say is not true about this and that and all that. But the thing is, if you want to change. You've got to change. You've got to take the step to change. So I can lead a horse to water, but I can't make the wa horse drink, right? So I started telling her about how um, th that following Jesus is not a religion. Getting healed is not a religion. It is not. Um, it's not being in church. It is. It is that you confess your sins and that you ask to be healed. So, um, you know, it's just, this is something that's difficult to rec recreate in a video because I talked to her for about an hour. Um, but, but as you're talking with someone, <laughs> if you're going to evangelize, as you're talking with someone, you have to be a good listener. And one of the ways you can tell, actually one of the ways you can tell that a person um, isn't saved is that they aren't able to listen with spiritual ears. Um, you know, there, we all have different personalities. Some of us are big talkers, and some of us are really quiet. But if you're, but you're, if you're um, saved, you can be a big talker, but you're still able to listen with your spiritual ears, right? Jesus, uh, we're told to have ears that hear. So 
you have to be able to listen with your spiritual ears to the person which is loving them actually you know to love god with all your heart mind soul and strength and to love others to love others means you have to listen to hear what their needs are and then you have to at the same time be listening to the prompting of the holy spirit and he will do it he will do it so um i ended up you know explaining to her that she was going to need to make some changes if she really wanted to get healed um i did I did pray for her. I put my hand on her head. This is outside the hospital. Put my hand on her head and um, prayed for her mind to be healed. And and Jesus can heal her. And it can be it could be instantaneous. It is. It's instantaneous. It's it's a supernatural uh, event that that is a mystery. But I have seen. And I told her this too. I have seen an Alzheimer's patient who was sick in the hospital. Um, and I did not lay hands on him and pray for his healing. I just prayed for him. And from from one week when I saw him and he's not really aware of where he is and he's in the hospital to the next week, he he's telling me that Jesus came to visit him in his hospital room. And that, uh, I mean, he was, he, and the, the doc, I mean, the doctor was in the room before I went in and the doctor was releasing him and he was, he was telling, I've been healed. I've been healed. Jesus came to see me in the hospital. Um, and this was not a believer. So, um, well, he said he was a believer when he was a kid, but anyway, and he was like, I've been healed. I'm going to go to church. I promised Jesus I was going to go to church. I'm getting baptized. I mean, all this, you know, and he's married to a Jewish woman, so I don't know how that worked out. But anyway, this woman, you know, she's grown up uh, and she's older than I am. She's been in the Catholic church all of her life. She's had 20 years of PTSD. So would you pray for her? I, I pray, I laid hands on her. I prayed for her. She cried while I was praying for her. Um, and, you know, I just pray that the burden will be lifted and that God will just give her a new mind. I told her that, um, so these are some of the things that I suggested to her in listening to her and then knowing what, uh, how God um, heals. I said, you know, when you, when you were driving around town or whatever and you have a thought that reminds you of something bad that has happened to you, you need to take that thought captive and replace it with something good. So I said that she needs to, um, that I'm praying for Romans 12, 1 and 2 for her, which is, you know, don't be conformed to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So I'm praying for her mind to be renewed. And one of the ways that a, um, a person who has dealt with depression for a long time is that you need a, a spiritual, supernatural renewing of your mind, but then also you cooperate with Jesus in saying, I, I don't want that thought anymore. I, 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 you know, I told her, I've told different people, I'm not sure if I told her this, but I said, just say, I rebuke that thought and I think this. So I said, if she sees something and it, and it starts to make her feel bad, say, no, I have prayed to renew my mind. Something as simple as that. Just, I have prayed to renew my mind. Um, other people I have counseled to say, um, God has not given me a spirit of fear or timidity. Um, different things. But, first of all, she's got to get born again. <laughs> so that's what I'm praying for her to get born again. I ask that you and y'all are so wonderful. I feel so blessed on how much I just know for sure that y'all are praying for me. And I ask that you pray for Michelle that um, God will do it. She's like, it was no accident that I ran into you today. And I was like, no, it's definitely no accident. It's a God incidence is what I call them. Uh, but God knows that, um, you know, what she's been through and, um, and I've been through it too. And to, you know, whatever we're given we're supposed to be able to give back so i've been given a uh, great great joy and uh relationship and intimacy with with my lord and savior jesus christ and so i want to give that to her too it's like it's really like i'm a doctor in that 
I know what the disease is. I'm very, very familiar with the disease of, of PTSD and depression. And, um, and I've been to so many things, so many things. He, you know, a deliverance ministry, um, New Life Weekend, um, you know, basically anything that I thought would help me, I've been to. <laughs> and, and I will tell you, um, you know, all of them, all it all boils down to you need to be born again <laughs> because that nine months of being suicidal, I was on the medicines, I was going to counseling, all of that. It really is that uh, you need to be born again. And I, and, I, and I tried to tell her this too. I said, it does matter what you believe. Um, you know, it's not, that's another reason why it's not about religion. It is that you have to believe in who you have to believe in who Jesus Christ is and also believe that you're a guilty sinner. So that's where the gospel gets difficult in that you see somebody who's hurting and you want them to, uh, you know, you want to give them the fix, but the fix does require first that they look at themselves. And so that is, that's where you got to be gentle, but you still have to point out that person's sin. And, um, and when, when I see somebody who's really broken hearted and hurting, um, I am, I am more gentle on pointing out, but the law is perfect for converting the soul. Um, so I'm more gentle and I'll get into one where I'm more diff more strong, um, a little bit later, but I am more gentle when I see someone who's broken hearted because then I know, I know that Jesus loves the brokenhearted and it's like a, it's like a, a sheep that's been injured, you know, and, and Jesus wants to help them. But I still say that, you know, what you've been doing your entire life has not worked because you were born a sinner. And so, um, you know, your religion and going to uh, what she said, she, she didn't say I love the mass. She said I love the liturgy. The liturgy is not going to help you. The liturgy is not going to heal you. It is that you've got to read the Bible. And I did tell her, you know, that um, at the end of the book of Revel, at the end of the Bible, there's the book of Revelation, and Revelation in the last chapter says that you can't add anything to the Bible or you will be cursed. But that if you do what the Bible says and and use the Bible only, that you will be blessed. So she was she was getting it, and um, but I wasn't like this. I wasn't, like, and I don't ever do. I never ever say you you. I don't ever do that. But I do talk about sin, and I do point out that a person's guilty. But I try to let them uh, let them feel it in their heart that they're guilty. So also, in this case, I tried to let her feel in her heart that her ways of fixing things and the world's ways of fixing things with, you know, being on these drugs and all of this. And I'm not, I'm not totally against uh, antidepressants. I'm not, I was, I, I, think, I think they really, really helped me. I was on them for, uh, since 2004. I was off a, a couple of times for different reasons, but basically I was on the same, um, antidepressant, uh, which isn't a really super strong one. I was on Lexapro. I don't think that's a very s strong one, but, um, but I was on it, you know, from 2004 till, uh, last 2017, 9, 20, 2017 when I just stopped. Um, so I'm not saying that, that you shouldn't go and get, uh, help with a doctor and get medicines and everything. I'm just saying, that what she really needs is to admit that what she's tried to do to fix the problem and that looking at all these things, I mean, cause she's had a lot, she's had a lot of problems with people doing really bad things to her. I mean, she's abused and she's been treated badly by uh, family and um, just a lot of different people have really abused her and hurt her. But the problem, which is terrible. It's terrible, 
but the problem is that um, that the way to get free from the past to be able to walk in the present is to recognize who you are today, who you are today. Um, and, you know, I explained to her, I said, you know, the rapture could be happening, and if the rapture happens, you'll be left behind. And I said, you know, we don't know if we have another day to live, and if you die today, um, you won't be going to heaven because you don't know Jesus personally. So you have to look at your own sins. And I don't think I even went through, uh, I don't, at the time, I did not go through what her sins were. So when I come home, so I'll, I'll talk about the next one in just a second. So when I come home from that witnessing experience, which it took, I mean, yeah, you have to give it time. I, at least I believe you have to give it time. So that's why I'm really, really, really blessed that I have obeyed God and have not gotten uh, remarried because my husband divorced me, which means that the man who marries me commits adultery. And so I'm really blessed. And, you know, it is interesting that in the Bible it says that even widows should consider not getting remarried because if you are married, then you have responsibilities for your husband. So I don't. And I'm free, and I had time to give to this woman, Michelle. So I laid hands on her. We prayed for her mind to be renewed. Um, and then I, when I got home, um, after some other, three, two other witnessing experiences, um, I prayed for her, and I sent her a few things. So I sent her, um, gotquestions.org has a whole section on uh, Catholicism and the difference between what, the Bible has to say and what Catholicism has to say. And really, I said, you know, the Catholicism has kept you in a prison. It's a prison. It's a religious prison. And if you really want to break free from your depression, you've got to break free from your prison, which means you've got to break free from your religion and get to read the Bible. So I sent her an email with um, gotquestions.org. Um, Catholicism questions, and I um, got up in the middle of the night, got woke me up in the middle of the night, and I opened to uh, Psalm 32 and 33, but then I read uh, Psalm 34, and that's what I sent to her, and asked her to read Psalm 34, um, because Psalm 34, as I mean, as I was reading it, the Lord is the Lord hears hears his people when they call to him for help. So I'm I'm calling to the Lord for help for Michelle. He rescues them from all their troubles. So I want him to rescue Michelle from all her troubles, her troubles of PTSD. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. He rescues those whose spirits are crushed. She is definitely crushed. Um, the righteous person faces many troubles but the Lord comes to, res to the rescue each time. The Lord protects the bones of the righteous. Not one is broken. Calamity will surely overtake the wicked, and those who hate the righteous will be punished. So she, she's not righteous yet, right? Because she's not born again. Once she's born again, she's made righteous, and she will be hated for being born again. She'll be hated um, because she'll belong to the Lord. Um, she's already being hated by evil people and abusive people in her life. She's already being hated. The stuff that they say to her is hateful, right? That's part of it. You have to, you have to call it what it is, is hatred. Um, but the Lord will redeem those who serve him. No one who takes refuge in him will be condemned. Really, that's, that right there is the gospel. The gospel's all throughout the Bible. But, you know, I can see the gospel in that. You've got a person who's brokenhearted, and the answer to being brokenhearted is to be made righteous. You're made righteous when you confess your sins to God and say, you know, instead of looking at what they've done to me, I am guilty before you. If I die and I go, go to meet my judge, I am guilty. They may have done horrible things to me, but I am still guilty. And so I want to... Turn that over. I don't want to be the same. I want to be made new. I want to be made new, but I'm going to do it by confessing my sins and asking Jesus to take my life over, take it over and give me a new mind and heal my broken heart. That's what he wants to do. 
And then once once you have surrendered to him and you take refuge in him, he takes care of you. He takes care of his little lost sheep. So I feel like she is a little lost sheep that, uh, as in the parable of the lost sheep, that Jesus wanted to show her the rescue, the way out um, before the rapture. So I'm hoping that she's going to get saved. Uh, I also told her to, um, to pray for herself, Romans 12, 1 and 2 every day. And... Yeah, so those were the three things. I said, let's, so you, if, you, if you commit to wanting to change and committing your life to Christ, um, I want you to read your Bible, um, starting with this Psalm 34. I want you to pray for yourself, Romans 12, 1 and 2 every day. And I want you to look at gotquestions.org for um, the Catholic question so that you will be able to see what it is you have believed that is wrong so that you'll be able to replace it with right thinking. And renewing your mind. Well, 25 minutes on just one, <laughs> one evangelism opportunity. So um, I'm going to do a second one on the more, the uh, the more difficult. It wasn't difficult. The more strong, uh, because God opposes the proud and He gives grace to the humble. So if God's already broken your heart, you're 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 more humble. You're more you're more open to. Um, hearing the gospel presented in a more gentle way. So I felt like that was a pretty gentle way of doing it. But please pray, pray for Michelle that she will get saved and that she will be putting the old person in the past who was depressed and PTSD, that's the old person, and that she will be made into the new person, the new woman who uh, is seeking after Jesus because he first loved her, right? He first loved her. He loved her enough to put her in my path and to give me ears to hear, to see what her situation is so that I could speak some truth into it, okay? So it was wonderful. It was a blessing to me, and I'm praying for her, and I'm um, hoping that she will take the next step. She has to respond. She has to drink the water. Like, I bring in the horse to the water, but she has to drink for herself. Um, and that part, that's the act of the Holy Spirit on her life. That part is... You know, in Ezekiel 2 and 3, it says that we have to speak what God tells us to say and that if we don't, their blood is on our hands. So I did what I was supposed to do. He's, he's wooing her. He wants her. But she has to take the step to say, I'm done with, with my old life and I want a new life. All right. God bless you. Get out there and witness, y'all. The time is so short. It is so short. You can do it. You can do it, even if it's just handing somebody a gospel track, which I did not give her a gospel track. How about that? It's kind of unusual, unusual for me. All right, I'm going to do the one uh, following this. I'm going to do another one on how to deal with a more difficult person. Okay, love you. Bye-bye.